All right, I'm here with John Wright from Sensei Shears and Michelle Evans, the very talented and beautiful groomer. Today we're going to demonstrate how these shears work. And first, I'd like to know a little bit about the history of your company. Well, we started Sensei Shears 30 years ago as actually a scissor sharpening company, but what, once we got involved with the sharpening, we realized that the bigger impact we could make in the marketplace would be redesigning the way tools work. So our motivation at Sensei for the last 30 years is to try to make scissors more ergonomically correct. You know, for example, we were the people that, that pioneered the idea of rotating handle scissors. We created the first one 25 years ago in the hairdressing business. We've been kind of dominating scissor sales in the hair, hair side of things for probably the last 20 years. But what we've done is we've developed a new line in our factory to be able to produce dog grooming scissors. And we've brought our two most ergonomic designs to the dog grooming world. I have to say, as a groomer, we really appreciate when you guys are looking out for the comfort of our hands, for sure. Um, Michelle actually is here with this beautiful standard poodle. What's her name? Her name is Vogue. Vogue. She's just gorgeous. Anyway, she's going to demonstrate these scissors by, by trimming down this, this forest of a tail Vogue's got going on. Uh, do you want to tell us about the pair of scissors that Michelle's using right now? Yeah, Michelle's using one of our, our rotating handle scissors. This is an 8-inch length in scissor. The advantage of the rotating handle scissor, it's going to allow Michelle as she works to be able to literally pivot the scissor in her hand versus moving wrist, shoulder, and elbow to accomplish the same movements. And how did you guys come up with the design? Well, again, you know, one thing that we had the advantage of is I had a very good friend who had a PhD in ergonomics. And so in hitting, <laughs> That's heads, handy. In hitting heads with him, once we worked on designs, we would put them in front of him and he would try to find fault on how they could affect the human body. And so what we have did is we kind of pushed the envelope from design just to, to simplify the approach to be at the head on for a hairdresser or the many parts of a dog. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's okay, well, she just burped. <laughs> All right, so what Michelle's demonstrating with is the straight shear right now. Right. So all of our shears, the straight shears, for example, are available in seven, eight, and nine inch lengths, as well as the curves as well. Okay. The edges that we put on all of our shears is what's called a convex edge, as opposed to a beveled edge. The advantage of the convex edge is it just cuts a little bit smoother through the hair and uh, a little bit cleaner through the hair. So uh, when it comes to sharpening these shears, do you, uh, you're still obviously in the sharpening business, and do you recommend that your shears come back to you for the sharpening? We, we really do. Um, we recommend that, you know, if they even don't even send them to us, find a quality sharpener to do the work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that what I have found is that the really good scissor sharpeners that are out there tend to prey on hairdressers, and the reason why is hairdressers will pay more to sharpen a scissor, number one, and the scissors are easier to sharpen because they're shorter. Yeah. So the advantage of, the advantage of using a, a, a good sharpener is, is they'll get greater life out of the scissor, and also somebody that's sharpening correctly will extend the life dramatically of the tool that they buy. Mm -hmm. If a groomer's going to invest in a good quality scissor, the last thing they want to do is give it to somebody with a grinding machine who will turn it into a $30 scissor quicker than you can blink. I, I believe that. I just um, was a little amazed there for a minute. Uh, you guys just saw Michelle just took a pile of this dog's hair and those shears sliced through it like, like she was, you know, trimming puppy hair. It was quite incredible. Well, I'm glad they did that. <laughs> <laughs> she was... Uh, yeah, that certainly showed but it no, off. The advantage of a rotating handle scissor, literally as you work around the dog, is if the handle doesn't turn, the way you steer the scissor tips through the dog is literally you use your whole body, wrist, shoulder, and elbow to move it, where if the thumb can turn, you're able to literally move the scissor with your fingers versus your whole body. So the feedback that you get from the groomers, is is it hard to get used to, or is it pretty easy to you know, adapt? It's, it's not hard to get used to it, but again, if, if, if I'm selling something like this to somebody that's been grooming for 15 or 20 years, there's a, there's a learning process. And the learning process really shouldn't happen grooming a dog at the shop, but rather if you have your own dog at home, number one, or number two, just learn, sit around while you're watching TV, hold it in your hand, and practice the movement. Because 
the thought process when you're grooming a dog is how am I going to cut this dog, not how am I going to move the scissor. So That's once true. you've learned the movement, then then the grooming of the first dog is less frustrating, and you develop bags of tricks essentially as you work around the dog over the next week yep. on where you want to position that scissor to be in the most comfortable position. Yeah, absolutely. How are you finding the scissors, Michelle? Very nice, very smooth. I can definitely tell that my thumb is staying in line with my wrist. Um, it's very nice cut, very nice edge. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it looks like it, and you're doing a beautiful job with them as well. Well, and again, the thing that aids in being able to get used to a rotating scissor, even if I've never used one, is the way the human body works, quite frankly, is your mind wants your body to be comfortable. And if it's not, what happens? You get pain signals and things like that. So the advantage of the rotating handle scissor is your mind wants you to work in a natural position. So that's why these shears over time, you literally evolve into using them. And tradition tells me that once a person uses these rotating scissors for an extended period of time, that's all they'll ever buy in the future because they realize that a standard handle that doesn't rotate forces them to move their body into unfriendly positions. So. Yes, and us as groomers, we definitely have wrist problems, we have thumb problems, inflammation in our hands constantly. So it's really good to know that there's companies like you that are looking out for us for sure. Yeah, well that was a big eye-opening thing once I entered the grooming business. Because again, we started and been, have been in the scissor business on the hair side of business for many, many years. And the benefits that hairdressers got out of this is probably 10% the benefit of a groomer would get out of it. Because, you know, quite frankly, when you or I get our hair cut, they might close, that hairdresser might close the scissor 20 or 30 times and your hair's done, where a groomer's doing that much on a paw of a, a dog, so. Absolutely, Michelle's probably opened and closed these scissors about 300 times yeah, she could have just done on her tail. she haircuts in that time, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's looking incredible, Michelle. Nice and smooth, and you don't even have to go over it again. All right, so let's talk about these blenders. Do you consider them blenders that Michelle's yeah, using now? Yeah, this is a blending shear, but this I guess we would refer to more as a finishing shear as well, that we have two versions of, of blenders at Sensei. We have a more traditional multi-tooth one that has little teeth that hold the hair. This is gonna remove hair quicker, but the, the speed has its pitfalls that if I'm trying to eliminate a straight line, I'm replacing with that type of shear, I'm replacing it with a dotted line. Mm -hmm. This is what we refer to as a no line thinner and it's designed to allow the hair to actually move on the blade while the other one cuts it off. So the advantage there is that we kind of refer to it as the magic eraser. So somebody that's not really good at scissoring and whatnot, if they have to make a hard edge go away, they can do it very quickly here and not create new problems by leaving dotted lines behind. So, so. they're essentially like no other blender on the market. Well, I, I'm not sure it's exactly like no other blender, but it's something that we pioneered on the hair side of the business. And once we put it in front of groomers, they were they were letting us know that they didn't see anything like that. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see how much hair is actually coming off with this. Michelle could probably finish an entire dog with these with these blenders. She probably could, but if she wants to do it quicker, she probably wouldn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that's one thing is I'll, I'll often show this to groomers, but then the first question I ask them is, I kind of pigeonhole groomers into two classes. There's people that are aspire to compete and better their skills, and that's great. But then there's also people that are perfectly happy grooming the family dogs, and they're production oriented. Mm -hmm. And so you have to weigh the fact that you know this year, sure it's going to thin and whatnot, but if if it's, it's going to take me slightly longer, but it's going to give me a better finish. So. You know, I always kind of tell groomers, if I'm grooming family dogs, you know, I win and get paid if the dog smells good, has a good looking cut and has a bow on its head. <laughs> yep, so, yep. but certainly someone that wants to compete, you know, when you're competing, that the judge is doing what? They're backcombing, hunting for scissor marks and things like that. So if you get a tool that allows you to eliminate those scissor marks by not creating marks of their own, mm -hmm. that's how you score higher and end up taking home championships. So. So if the viewers at home that aren't lucky enough to be here with us and visit you at your booth um, want to know where to find you and get these shears and learn more about them, how, does, how, how do they go upon doing that? Well, the first place they could look for us is we, had, we're, we exhibit at pretty much all the Barclay shows. So we're at all the shows, be it Hershey or Tacoma in a few weeks and here. 
but also for more information they could go on our website which is simply www.sensei that's s e n s e i dog.com um, one thing when you go on our website is if you're looking at something like a rotating scissor, if there's a video link that you can click on that has explanations of how to use and how to adapt to a, that type of scissor. So instructions really on instruction. how to. Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of a jumping off point, meaning it's going to tell you how to move it and why the movement is important. Yeah. Well, it sounds like incredible technology. How does your hand feel now? Fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. No we're, problem. I think we're going to stop by your booth in a little bit and take a look at some of your other products. Thank you. All right. Thank you for sponsoring Groomer TV. You're very welcome. Nice to meet you.